Hello, good morning to all of you. So uh, we were discussing about uh, the concept of potential energy surface and you already know uh, about that potential energy surface is just the relationship between the molecular geometry and its energy and you also know about the stationary points and in last lecture we have defined the uh, structure of interest that is the stationary points and how they are connected through intrinsic reaction coordinates that is the minimum energy path and also we have defined the transient state and we uh, now we'll do we'll make uh, the relationship between the potential energy surface to some basic important concepts of chemistry so uh, you already know that uh, the basic concept there but uh, you we have to make make a link up between these two okay so let's uh, see how we can make them what does mean actually means that if you know the potential energy surface you can also explain uh, that basic chemistry concepts of the system so now uh, potential surface uh, and vibrational frequencies so you know that molecules uh, can vibrate uh, and also these vibrations can be actually the you can found them you can uh, determine them using the infrared spectroscopy and this uh, vibrations uh, frequency of a diatomic molecule you can express uh, by the simple equations that mu is equal to 1 by 2 pi root of r k by mu you know what is k k is the force constant which is actually implies the second energy derivative of the potential energy v with respect to bond length r at equilibrium position so if we uh, write mathematically it is k is equal to del 2 v r by del r 2 and mu is actually the reduced mass uh, because you in the vibrations both the of the mass actually uh, making contributions so we can make uh, they are, uh, we, if we count uh, both of their contributions, then we have to consider the reduced mass. Okay. So now for a polyatomic molecule, you will get uh, many of the force constants uh, and we said that the, we can make a array of matrix for that and we can say uh, that it's Hessian and you already, we have already defined Hessian in our last lecture. Okay. So, uh, actually molecular vibrations uh, uh, means that the uh, atoms actually uh, have a particular motions away from their equilibrium positions on the potential energy surface. Okay. And you know that low frequencies uh, corresponds to the shallow regions uh, and of the surface and whereas high frequencies correspond to the steeper region. And uh, for a, for polyatomic molecules, uh, if you have uh, if you got the transient state, so what we have defined that all of this force constant we will be uh, uh, positive except one will be negative, okay? Because that is maxima on that coordinate. Okay. So if uh, this is actually implies your force constant, what are the diagonal elements? So, if this is uh, your force constant and force constant for a particular reaction coordinate is found negative, then if we put this negative value or uh, this value in here in these equations, so you can see that we will get a root of a negative value and root of a negative means you will get the frequency as imaginary. Okay. So, for that transient state, uh, we will get all the positive frequencies but only a single imaginary frequency. Okay. So, like if we uh, compute the vibrational frequencies of the molecule, so if it is minima, then all the uh, all this uh, force constant, sorry, all this force constant will be positive. So, all the frequencies will be positive value. But if you are actually getting the transient state, then we will have the a particular frequency will be imaginary. It corresponds to the particular force constant which can be any of these diagonal element okay so from uh, the frequency calculations also we can determine the transient state finally we can verify actually okay now let's for how potential if you know the potential and surface how, how can you explain the thermodynamical fact of these systems so uh, the relative stability of reactant and product molecules uh, uh, is indicated on the potential surface by their energies okay so the thermodynamic state functions like internal energy enthalpy all you can calculate uh, of uh, and free energy you can calculate using comp uh, computational quantum chemistry 
and you can also uh, define either the reactions are uh, exothermic or endothermic or thermoneutral you already know all these concepts but now what we are actually doing we are now able to calculate this all this energy theoretically okay so we don't need to ha take help uh, from the experiment to find out that either it, this reactions will be positive uh, exothermic or endothermic or like that so another uh, things are that uh, if you know this all the energies of uh, like uh, reactant and product also then you can also uh, calculate their uh, mutual distributions that how many molecules will be in the reactant side or in the product side that you can easily get from the Boltzmann distributions law uh, okay so this is you know that NP and NR is the population is the uh, is two states and uh, they they will be the populations will be depends on their energy difference okay uh, okay so here uh, you uh, KB is the Boltzmann constant and T is the temperature okay and EP uh, ER is the energies per molecule of the products and reactants so now the Boltzmann distributions can tell us the relative populations of the products and reactants at the equilibrium or it can also tell us the relative distributions of the of the different products if there is a, a many products are formed in single reactions you know sometimes that there is one major product and few you get the minor products okay and that also uh, can come only from this their energy difference okay so like if you have a table like that and in, in any experimental uh, paper or in uh, your uh, organic chemistry book you always uh, you have seen this type of uh, table that how much the major minor ratios are there and these are all can be uh, computed using the uh, potential and the surface and they are just simple reaction energy difference okay uh, sorry their energy difference okay so you know next task is that uh, uh, if we get the potential energy surface and you can uh, get the thermodynamics also now our uh, next uh, things are that how we can get the idea of kinetics from this potential energy surface so these are also very simple like a potential energy can uh, give you the reaction rate so let's uh, take a simplified uh, potential energy surface here reactant product and transient state are shown so this is a very simple uh, looks like the our uh, previously what we have shown for HCN to HNC transformation okay so here you know that uh, now we know the energy of the reactant uh, transient state and the product so we can get the uh, difference between the uh, transient state and the reactant so what is that that is the activation energy so now if you uh, you know the relationship uh, of this that uh, if we know the activation energy then we can simply calculate the uh, rate using the Arrhenius equations or we can also uh, calculate the rate uh, using the uh, Eyring equations that is also possible that is uh, has a very simple type of same type of reaction that is k is equal to kbt by h u to the power minus delta g dagger by r rt okay so the delta g dagger is the free energy difference okay so now here e transition state and uh, ets and er are the energies of the uh, transition state of the reactants and uh, uh, but uh, react, uh, transient state in the reactants okay so uh, the rate constant and the overall rate actually do not depends uh, uh, on the energies of reactant and product but they are depends on the activation energies that is their difference between the transient state and the reactant which we generally expressed by e dagger and also pre exponential uh, factor determines the effective orientations uh, probability that is uh, this a okay and uh, how it the reactants uh, uh, approaches to, uh, uh, to the collisions okay so next is that uh, how potential energy surface is uh, can explain the product formation in your system so you have already might have the uh, idea of the thermodynamic and kinetic kinetic control product but here we will make a uh, more understanding from the potential energy surface okay so you uh, suppose you have a potential energy uh, surface like uh, this one 
then uh, we know that lower the activation energy is always actually uh, implies that the rate constant is higher because you know there is a exponential negative relationship k is equal to a to the power minus ea by rt so a if a will be uh, lower then your exponential negative term will be lower which actually makes the transition uh, reactant rate uh, reaction rate is higher okay so if e decade is zero then we said that this is completely barrierless reactions okay and the reaction rate will be uh, entirely uh, controlled by how rapidly the molecules collides and moves so such reactions are known as diffusion controlled reactions means uh, the rate will come as a or the diffusion rate of the reactions okay so here if you can now look for this uh, potential energy surface so uh, you have two uh, possibilities either it can uh, go through this uh, blue surface or it can go through the pink surface okay so if you look that if it's uh, go through blue surface then it has uh, lower activation energy then means that you have higher rate uh, constant whereas if it's follow the pink surface it has the uh, more activation energy which will uh, reduce the rate okay so if you start the reactions and uh, wait for some time and you can see you will get the product like p2 because that is uh, easily formed so for that p2 is the uh, uh, formed quickly so we can say this is the kinetically controlled product as the kinetics is very high for that whereas if you wait for long long time and you can see that p2 and p1 energy uh, compare the p2 and p1 energy then what is there the p1 energy is lower so according to Boltzmann distribution law p1 will be more favorable so after a long time you can uh, get the more uh, favorable product that is the p2 p1 and that is actually said the thermodynamical control product okay so here uh, two pathways are shown to explain the thermodynamical control product and kinetically controlled product okay so a kinetically controlled reactions uh, will proceed uh, along the blue pathway in fig this figure and the product formed uh, is different than the corresponding uh, to equilibrium of the system okay so though it's uh, going through this path but finally uh, as after long time this p2 can transform to the p1 because of the more stability of the p1 okay so from this lecture uh, you now uh, if you can if you take the systems and if you can uh, actually make your potential and surface from the computational chemistry then what will happen you can define any thermodynamic phenomena of your reactions you can explain the which product will form you can explain or you can predict the rate constant how fast your uh, reactions will go and many more things okay so uh, thank you very much for the uh, for listening